Hello, this is George Hutton, and you are listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. Today we continue our study of Tung Fu, the art of interconversational reframe. Our first objection for today will be commitment equals bad. Use this to combat anything that sounds like your relationship partner isn't ready for a commitment. Pattern 1. Metaframe Commitment is really impossible to avoid when you think about it. I mean, just agreeing to meet somebody at some point in time is kind of a commitment. Pattern 2. Change frame size Of course, not now. But as we move through time and hopefully grow closer, as I get to know you better and become better skilled in both satisfying your needs, protecting your boundaries, and giving you plenty of space, hopefully you'll see the value of commitment. Pattern 3. Apply to self A to A. Are you committed to that idea? Doesn't that make it a bad thing? Pattern 4. Apply to self B to B. I think it's bad to commit to anything you aren't sure of, like some of the ideas about commitment that are dependent upon relationships which are always evolving and changing. I suggest you let go of the idea that commitments are bad since you will always be updating the way you think about things. Pattern 5. Reality Strategy How do you know? I mean, how can you really know if something is good or bad until you've experienced it? Pattern 6. Model of the World That's an interesting model of the world. I suppose that's why Mother Nature made love an instinct instead of something we can consciously choose. Pattern 7. Intent I know you don't want to feel constrained, which is why I'm absolutely committed to giving you all the space you need whenever and however you need it. Pattern 8. Redefine A not equal to B. Commitment isn't bad, it's completely freeing. Once you know what to expect and you don't have to worry about things like your own personal boundaries and your emotional needs, knowing they will be protected and fulfilled, you can free your mind to pursue your true dreams. Pattern 9. Redefine B not equal to A. What's bad is making any decisions without really thinking about what's at stake here. Pattern 10. Counter example. I'm glad the people who decided to get on the Mayflower weren't afraid of commitment. Pattern 11. Chunk up. What I find fascinating is the idea of committing to an idea that is always evolving and changing in ways that can't be predicted. That's the kind of uncertainty that makes life fulfilling. Pattern 12. Chunk down. What specific parts of commitment are you worried about? When do they worry you the most? What are the upper and lower limits of these ideas which cause you anxiety? Pattern 13. Metaphor. Long ago, Mother Nature had a decision to make. She could make us ultra-rational and capable of choosing what to do and committing to those choices, or she could give us instincts like love and sexual desire that would make the idea of commitment not really necessary. I guess she was really committed to really making sure we got our needs met no matter what. I'm really glad she was committed enough to us lowly humans. Pattern 14, another outcome. Whether commitment is ultimately good or bad isn't really the issue. I mean, we are both smart enough to change our minds if it turns out to be the wrong idea. It's that we are willing to look into the future together that is the most important. Pattern 15, consequences. If you never commit to anything, you'll be very lonely and you'll always be living under the cloud of uncertainty. I could never let you do that to yourself. Pattern 16, hierarchy of criteria. The more important thing is making sure your emotional needs are met, that I understand and respect your boundaries, and that I give you enough space to do your own thing. To that, I am absolutely committed. Pattern 17. Take it to the threshold. So, what do you do when you go to a restaurant and they ask you for your order? I mean, once you decide and you've committed, that's bad, right? How do you even choose what to eat when you're at home? You must be one of those people who have a really high electric bill because you're always standing in front of an open fridge trying to decide what to eat. Reverse presuppositions. How can more commitment mean more freedom? How can less commitment mean less freedom? Our next objection will be, this relationship is bad. Use this to counter any energy that suggests any current relationship should end. Pattern 1. Metaframe. Everything has bad elements. Pattern 2. Change frame size. How bad are they? For how long? How can we better turn the bad parts into good parts? Pattern 3. Apply to self A to A. 
I don't think you should continue to have a relationship with that idea. Pattern 4, apply to self. I think that thinking that is bad, as it makes it seem like complex things like love and emotion can be put into simple binary categories. Pattern 5, reality strategy. How do you know? The best parts generally follow the worst parts when things change and evolve to another level. Pattern 6, model of the world. That's an interesting model of the world. If everybody gave up their relationship as soon as they hit a bad patch, the human race would have been wiped out centuries ago. Pattern 7, intent. I think what's important to you is a happy life, free from any unnecessary worry. That's why relationships are so helpful to face these problems together and work things out for the best of everybody involved. Pattern 8. Redefine A not equal to B. This relationship isn't bad. It's evolving to better deal with the uncertainty that life throws at you. And the longer this relationship lasts, the more quickly we'll be able to turn bad things into good things. Pattern 9. Redefine B not equal to A. What's bad is not looking at our problems with the flexibility of thinking that will allow us to solve them. Pattern 10. Counterexample. Have you ever known a couple to fight and then have a wonderful makeup session after? Pattern 11. Chunk up. Bad things all have good elements to them, and good things all have bad elements to them. The more important thing is how we can change them instead of being at their mercy. Pattern 12. Chunk down. What specifically is bad about this relationship? How can I help to solve it? Pattern 13. Metaphor. St. Paul teaches us that love is kind. Love is patient. It does not dishonor others. It sounds to me like love, as a foundational element of any healthy relationship, takes work. And when something is bad, it's nothing more than a signal on what needs work. Pattern 14. Another outcome. Whether you are happy with this relationship at this particular moment in time isn't really the issue as I see it. What's more important is that we talk this out, identify the problems, and then see about fixing them. Pattern 15. Consequences. If you continue bailing out of things as soon as they get difficult, you will not ever achieve true enlightenment that only comes after a struggle. Pattern 16. Hierarchy of Criteria. The more important thing is not whether this relationship provides either of us a steady stream of pure happiness, but that it provides a refuge from the harsh, uncaring world in which we can fall back, lick our wounds, and recover to fight another day. Pattern 17. Take it to the threshold. So as soon as you sense something that's not completely 100% happy, you run for the hills? How is that even possible because running requires work, which isn't 100% happy, which means you are faced with doing something unpleasant to run away from something unpleasant, which means you'll be stuck in an infinite loop of unpleasantness until you finally perish. Wow, that's a complicated way to live. Pattern 18, reverse presuppositions. How can the worst things get between us motivate us even more to create the happiest and most loving relationship that ever existed? I'm George Hutton. Thank you for listening to the Mind Persuasion Podcast. I look forward to speaking to you again soon. For more information, please visit mindpersuasion.com. 